the Avic Warfare mode in Delta Force, Hawk Ops is fun. It is simple but enjoyable in its current unfinished alpha build, but has good core mechanics and features that let you have fun. It feels like what I wanted Battlefield 2042 to be. It's a semi-futuristic setting with features and content from past games of the genre. While it's not extremely complex and doesn't take itself too seriously, that allows the game to be simple and fun, nothing more, which isn't a bad thing. The main reason I wanted to make this video in the first place is to express my opinions about the Battlefield mode. I got early access by signing up to the website and after a few hours of playing, I had some good enjoyable fun about what I've played so far as a whole, as I have thoroughly enjoyed myself. And I should also say that this is not going to be a full review over every weapon, map, game mode, etc. And rather just my overarching opinions. So, it's been a while since I've invested a good chunk of time into a game similar to this. While I have dipped my toes into the recent Call of Duty, Battlefields, and other small games like BattleBit, none of them have really managed to scratch the itch that I've had when playing these games. What that exact itch is, I can't quite say. I mean, I loved playing Battlefield 3 and 4 back in the day because of how simple and easy they were while still allowing players to have high skill ceilings. Of course, that still exists in games nowadays, but there's just something that to me feels a little bit missing and that I can't quite say this game has either. And while there aren't specific mechanics or game design choices I can specifically point to, there is a fun element that I find missing in a lot of modern games in the genre. Maybe it's just because every game copies the same formula, after all that's what makes the money, or maybe I just have changed over the years. I'm not sure exactly what it is, and it's the main reason I enjoy making these types of opinion-based videos. These videos allow me to express what I'm thinking at the current time while still engaging in a larger discourse and expanding my viewpoints. My viewpoints in the future might always change, especially as this game fully launches in the future, as what I'm currently playing is just an alpha. But that's what's fun about making this video. So the first thing that popped out to me was the weaponry and gunplay. I've learned over the last couple of years that I heavily enjoy using a variety of weapons in video games that feel fun to use. In an FPS game, or any shooter game really, using weapons is the main thing that you do. So it only makes sense to me that it's something that I unconsciously judge very heavily. I think the guns themselves are amazing to shoot. The weapons sound amazing and look beautiful. The recoil is minimal for most guns, with it varying between rifles, machine guns, SMGs, etc. But there's still enough there to impact your aim if you don't manage it correctly. And coinciding with this, the attachment system affects the weapons similar to Battlefield or modern Call of Duties. Along with this, there is a whole calibration system that allow you to completely customize each attachment and what it does specifically to the stats. The attachments themselves are pretty typical for the genre, but they go into a little bit more depth than I was inspecting. There are a lot of real world sights, lasers, and foregrips, and it makes it feel more like Tarkov with the attachment systems that it has. On top of this, the sights in the game are just majestic. I mean, just looking through them, they're simple, but they look so good. I love using the optics in this game and just how clean they feel. No matter which optic you're using, just a normal red dot or something more magnified like a sniper scope, they just feel clean to you. And I think that's something that's heavily overlooked in a lot of modern shooter games. I kind of mentioned it previously, but each gun does feel different. Each rifle feels unique, while machine guns feel completely different than the whole rifle category as a whole. Each gun, so far, has felt good to shoot, and each in its own kind of way. The machine gun, while has a lot of recoil, you can easily go prone and minimize a lot of it. Whereas the rifles or even DMRs, you can get away with running and gunning a bit more, but you still have to control some of that recoil. It's just fun and I like it. Similar to Call of Duty, there's an entire custom loadout setting that you can create for different weapons and attachments and little gadgets that you can switch out. I do like this as since each class uses a little bit different weaponry, you can then quickly switch out different weapons and preset attachments that you like for different scenarios. Saying this though, there is one major thing that I hate about the loadout system, and it's that you can't modify your loadouts during a match. I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but it's really lame that I can't modify my guns in between deaths. It sucks when you want to change something as simple as a scope because you dislike the one that you have, or maybe you want to try out multiple different scopes in a match. You just simply can't even do that. It's probably my biggest complaint with the game that I can imagine could be fixed pretty easily. I simply don't see a point 
in locking the customization during matches and genuinely hope that this is not a feature in the full game. You can, however, change classes, just like Battlefield. And some guns are used by different classes, so let's just talk about those. I'm not a huge fan of the character-based skills and features in this genre of games. I really just want to play a Battlefield-like game and not something like Overwatch. That said, the classes aren't that bad and don't detract that much from the gameplay. It definitely leans into the arcadey aspect, but I never felt that it really drew away from the fun. That said, the biggest thing I hate about having a character-based system is that it feels hard to visually determine which team is which. Obviously, you have overhead indicators for teammates, but I prefer the old Battlefield system where uniforms were dictated by team. Even recent Call of Duty games recognize this to a degree where some characters were on one team and other characters were on the other team. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter, but it's just something I don't really like. The obvious thing is the abilities that the characters use and each of them being unique, but not too overpowered. Just briefly going through them, the Assault class gets movement buffs and uses things like explosives and uh, has some other things like armor and small heals. There's a demo type class that gets anti-tank weaponry and anti-air while also using some sonic traps to disrupt enemies. There's the medic class that gets a syringe gun to heal their players and they can revive downed players. And they also get the classic battlefield ammo and medic crates. And then there's the recon class that gets some type of spotting technique with the default using a bow and arrow, which is definitely the most out there in the game in terms of arcadiness and non-traditional battlefield. Individually, the classes aren't bad and each serve their unique role, but I truly think that the old battlefields did the loadouts and classes correctly, with each class having specific roles, but still letting the player decide what equipment they actually wanted to bring. Having an engineer class be able to choose the repair tool, but also choose other things like an EOD bot was just something that let you have fun and let you choose what your loadout was actually going to be. I definitely think it's too late for Hawk Ops to change this core mechanic to their game, so we're pretty much stuck with the characters and class system that's been provided. It is what it is and I accept that part of the game, but it's not really what I prefer. The vehicles in the game are just classic Battlefield. They're pretty limited in this alpha test, but you have a basic car, a boat, you have a basic car, boat, tanks, APCs, an anti-air version, and some classic attack helicopters. It's just like any other battlefield, and you use things like RPGs and even other vehicles to counter them. Of course, they're somewhat OP like they always have been in battlefield games, especially when used by the right people, but so far through my playing, it's never been completely unbalanced. As long as a team works together, you can take things down and even some of the maps providing ways to destroy vehicles. Overall, there's just nothing too exciting here. But I imagine that it will grow when the game fully comes out and there are more maps and game modes to play. There isn't much to say about the maps either. There's only a couple of them in this alpha test, but for the ones that we have, they're visually pleasing and feel unique. That said, they do need some minor balancing changes in the future, mostly relating to choke points and maneuverability. As far as I'm aware, there's only one game mode to play in the alpha test, at least at my current level, and that being a breakthrough mode similar to Battlefield. I think technically it might be called attack and defend, but it's breakthrough. Essentially, one team attacks and has to capture the specific points to progress while only having a limited number of lives, while the other team defends until the attacker either takes all the points and you lose, or all the lives are drained and then you win. It's simple, yet a fun game mode, and I think it's perfect for the game, especially in this alpha state. It offers plenty of replayability while also giving good structure for players. You're never running around the map mindlessly. You always have something to do and push towards as a team. Breakthrough game modes are just my favorite, though maybe I'm a little biased, but I'm glad that's what the alpha launch, and I'm looking forward to playing it in the future when the game comes out. Something I wanted to briefly discuss is the use of the bots in the game. I can say with at least 90% certainty, probably even higher than that, that there are bots used to fill up the multiplayer matches. That by itself is not really a problem, I mean even Battlefield 2042 did that when I played. But it seemed that the devs were trying to hide this in a way. Maybe I'm just ignorant here, and they're not actually trying to, but from my experience, the bots all have real looking names. And at first glance, there's no real way to differentiate them from a real player. 
other than the movement and the way they quote unquote act. If these are real bots, it's possible that these names are just taking from real accounts, or they could be manually added by the devs, I'm not really sure. That being said though, it's entirely possible that these are actual real players, and that there's something else I'm just missing. I know multiple times I've had very bad server lag, where it felt like I was constantly rubber banding and possibly I just looked like a bot to somebody else because the server couldn't keep up with my movement. Though who knows, there are possible explanations. It's just at this time I am convinced that there are a lot of bots in the games that I have played and solely based on the names and stuff that it feels like the devs are trying to hide this in some way. Again, on its own, bots aren't a bad way to fill up a lobby. I'd rather have some bots than an empty lobby, to be honest, but I just find it weird that it seems like they're trying to hide it based on the names, and that there isn't a very obvious way to tell if something is a bot or not. That being said though, Hawk Ops is not the greatest game of all time, but it doesn't need to be, nor should it really try to be. The game is fun, and I can see myself launching this up, playing it for a few hours every few nights, when I feel like I just want something to sit down and enjoy a couple hours without really trying so hard. You know, it's probably not a game that I'm gonna be spending a bunch of time on every day trying to get good at, but that doesn't mean that the game is bad in any way. Games like these are perfect because you don't need to spend a lot of time learning mechanics or systems, especially in an established genre like this. Instead, I can just jump into the game at any time and just have some enjoyable fun especially when playing with friends. As far as I'm aware, the game is also going to be free, unless that's only for the extraction mode. I'm not entirely certain. But if this mode is free, then I think that would draw a lot of players into playing every once in a while. It being free would only draw more players in and bring a more overall fun experience to the average match. I think there's enough here based on what I've played that will make the game interesting and entertaining while still being able to be simple and good enough to have fun no matter what or how you play it. I've enjoyed my time so far and I hope to play more in the future. That being said, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.